so very much for all that you're doing in our lives and how you kept us safe this many weeks. And dear Father, thank you that we can return to the sanctuary, the building this morning. And dear Father, I pray that you will be exalted in our midst. And Lord, that you are Christ, you are Lord of all. And today we surrender and we exalt you as Lord and Savior of not only our lives, but the lives of the world. We love you. We rejoice in Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we're back inside. Uh, I, I really thought when we had to go to the parking lot for a few weeks, I really thought we were looking at a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks turned into 10 weeks outside, 11 Sundays out of this sanctuary, uh, but God has blessed. Uh, I was thinking 2020 has been a strange year. It's been an unusual year indeed. Uh, I want to thank all those. I don't want to name them by name because I will leave someone out, but uh, those that got us ready uh, to be in here today and in the fellowship hall today. So all those that were involved, thank you so very much. Also, I've already announced, but we will be honoring our graduates the last Sunday of this month. Uh, you can get pictures in. Uh, between now and uh, the 14th, which is next Sunday. So be aware of that. Also, we're continuing to receive money from your children's resource center. We'll do that through Father's Day. Also, you received a couple of uh, carefully headed documents, really the only documents we're handling this month, but nominating uh, team, uh, you can uh, drop those into the offering. Well, uh, the uh, flower pot did so well. The flower pot is still out there, so you can drop uh, those into the flower pot along with your offering. Coming or going, uh, you can use that flower pot for your offering. And any special offerings, uh, be sure to clearly mark them as such. Uh, also, I will let you know we'll have the first deacon nomination the last Sunday of this month, the 28th, last Sunday of this month, and we will actually vote on the nominees the second Sunday of July, so that's July the 12th. Now, also, no child care for a few weeks, uh, no Sunday evening for a little while as well. Uh, we have to clean out for every service and it, it really, uh, we're trying to, uh, trying to monitor that and, and, and uh, streamline it as much as we can without working everybody so much. So, uh, no, uh, Sunday, no child care um, for, for a while. Also, let me mention this. Uh, uh, we had our first, uh, really, it came up on us quickly. And so, the first Sunday, all we could do. Uh, was online, and so we did online that first Sunday, but then we had 10 weeks of drive-in services, and we averaged uh, uh, all the numbers, we averaged 80.3 in attendance uh, all for 10 weeks, uh, to God be the glory. I don't think we've had a 10-week stretch.
and thirteen dollars. Um, and if you average that out over a fifty-two Sunday year, uh, it's nearly two hundred thousand dollars. So uh, to God be the glory. So, and also we ended, we ended, and I know this is a record. We ended uh, May.
Great new Father, great things you have done. Dear Father, today I pray you would speak to our hearts. Dear Father, we lift up. I know during these days we've had several who have had some surgeries even during these days. Uh, dear Father, also I know Elma has a cataract procedure tomorrow. We pray for him, pray for safety as he goes through cataract surgery. Dear Father, um, we lift up. Uh, my heart has really been going out to uh, all of our ones in nursing homes during these days. Uh, placed in isolation, uh, can't uh, be around family and friends, and uh, my heart goes out to them, and I pray that you'll comfort them during these days. Also, uh, Kelly, as she continues her treatments, I believe she had one this past Friday, and we pray for her. As she continues these treatments, that you'll bring healing to her body. And dear Father, again, uh, on and on the list goes for so much. I know my brother John Reeves has had surgery and is recovering. We pray for him. And dear Father, uh, others uh, have had procedures and going through procedures, and we pray for them. And dear Father, again, we love you. We rejoice in Jesus. And we thank you for the gospel that is the power of God under salvation. And dear Father, we thank you for that opening uh, congregational song, uh, To God Be the Glory. And, and in Christ, uh, certainly in Christ, that's where we find our hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
apostles who live in them plant gardens and eat their produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters to men in marriage so that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply, therefore, do not decrease. Seek the welfare of the city. I have deported you to pray to the Lord on its behalf. For when it has prosperity, you will prosper. For this is what the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, says. Do not let your prophets who are among you or your diviners deceive you. And don't listen to uh, the dreams you elicit from them. For they are prophesying falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them. This is the Lord's declaration. For this is what the Lord says. When 70 years uh, for Babylon are complete, I will attend to you and will confirm my promise concerning you to restore you to this place. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your welfare, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. You will call to me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I will be found, Lord, be found by you. This is the Lord's declaration and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and places where I banished you. This is the Lord's declaration. I will restore you to the place that I deported you from. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, touch us this morning. Get me out of the way. May Jesus speak in this message words of encouragement today and keep our eyes fixed and focused on you. We love you, Lord Jesus. Speak to us now. As always, you get the praise, honor, and glory for all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Jeremiah had one big mission in his preaching and ministry, and that was to save Israel from Babylon. But unfortunately, Jeremiah's mission did not succeed. Jeremiah's preaching was clear. Uh, his preaching uh, simply said, turn away from your sins. Cast down your idols. Return uh, to uh, uh, return uh, away from uh, uh, your idols to the true God, or I will punish you. And all through the book, this is Jeremiah's message. Jeremiah would even walk the streets, making his body an object lesson. Jeremiah 27, he put himself in a yoke of bonds and bars like what you would see on a team of oxen and cattle. It was a visual picture of being under control of a master. Jeremiah, why are you walking around in, in uh, yokes of bonds and bars on your shoulders? This is a picture of us. If we don't repent, if we don't turn from our sins, the Babylonians will come to us and we will regret it forever. For 70 long years, God will allow us to be punished. Repent right now. Or for 70 years, you will be displaced from your homeland. That's the background of today's text. Here's what's going on. Sadly, the people ignored Jeremiah's message and did not repent. God punished them by allowing Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian Empire to come in and seize Israel. Many of the Israelites, for a total of 70 long years, would be carried away and forced to live in Babylon. The city of Jerusalem would lie in ruin, and many Jewish residents were stacked from their homes and businesses and carried away into Babylon where they were forced to live in exile. That's what's going on. A false prophet by the name of Hananiah attempted to deceive those carried away. 
to stand up for my Christian principles, but I, I need to do it in the right fashion. This week, for instance, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate of life. I, I, I really believe in the sanctity of human life. I, I'm a big advocate. And so I sent a message to our governor. I said, how about standing for life? Life in the womb. How about take a stand for those that can't defend themselves? Well, when you take stands like that, uh, you need to be ready for critics to jump on you. I had probably the worst thing ever said to me in my life this week happened. Somebody came back and said, my creep boy, you should have been a boy. Now, folks, that hit me hard now. Because I never even uh, had someone even come close to a comment. But I, I tried to say what I did in the right spirit. And, and so just, just be mindful when you take a stand for what's right, you will have critics. And um, you, you just got to love them and pray for them too. I've been praying for that gentleman ever since. God 
I'll say it through the prophet Jeremiah. This will be okay. I'm going to bring it home. You're going to have to pay the price. Said to me, I wonder if the United States of America is not paying the price for years of sin in this land. You're going to have to pay the price, but it's going to be okay. Here's what he's saying to us today. If you know Jesus, no matter what happens, it's going to be okay. That's right. It's going to be okay. Praise the Lord. It's going to be okay. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, this morning, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the teaching that you are our God, who is the Lord of armies. And Lord, today, in these moments, speak our hearts as we sing. Lord, may we surrender who we are to you. We love you. We praise Jesus. We thank you for this worship time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.